All right, thanks for that awesome introduction. Oh man, get my notes on here, all right. Um, well, cool. Well, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Hansel, um, founder and CEO of Dakota School. We've been a proud sponsor here of uh, the uh, Congressional App Challenge here for years. Uh, I want to welcome you guys, House of Code. Uh, it is awesome to be here uh, in the Capitol building uh, in person, right? So I'm going to start by talking about something that's been on my mind a lot, total thorn in my side, maybe you guys as well, college applications. Oh, man. So if you've been through it, if you've been through it, it's a whole new world out there. If you haven't yet, it's it's... I guess it's some fun stuff to look forward to, as I'll put it. Anyway, so I have a high school junior. Uh, I'm right in the thick of it, right? Like some of you guys, and so doing college tours and whatnot. Um, actually got a personal tour uh, from this kid that I know, this kid named Laker. A uh, quick, humble brag for Laker. Laker was actually the very first student at my school, at the Coder School. This is like nine, ten years ago when he was a sixth grader. Uh, and now he's a sophomore at a school that uh, you might have heard of, MIT. So now, you guys are all interested in STEM, and so when you're interested in STEM, uh, when you hear these three letters, right, MIT, uh, you have this kind of mixed, mixed emotional reaction, right? On the one hand, you love them, dream school, top school in the country, I'd love to go, but deep down inside, you're like, oh, I hate these guys, it's so hard to get in, it's impossible to get in, how do you get in, right? Um, anybody know the current acceptance rate for MIT? Scream it out! This year, 4%, that's right, 3 to 4%, roughly translated to virtually impossible, right? So I wish I could give you guys a secret to getting into MIT. Uh, I asked my buddy Laker, he didn't know, but he did point me to this blog written by the MIT admissions guys, all right? So the MIT admissions guys, they said uh, what you should do when you're applying to a top school is uh, do something they call applying uh, sideways, sideways, okay? So roughly paraphrase, applying sideways means that uh, who you are is not defined by these high-flying accomplishments, you know, that, that uh, we all think about when you're applying to these top schools. You know, captain of this thing, the president of that thing, you know, starting your own company, winning the Congressional App Challenge, whatever, right? If you're doing these things solely for the purpose of getting a better resume uh, in order to apply to college, uh, well, you're not applying sideways then, okay? So, but if you're doing these things because it's a part of who you are, it's part of your story, it's part of your passion, what you would do anyway, uh, even if you weren't applying to college, um, then that's what applying sideways means. Applying sideways means it's your passion that's important, not your resume. So, in fact, the MIT guys, um, this blog, it gave a great, great example of this student who built a uh, working nuclear reactor in their garage but was rejected from MIT, right? That's, that's why you gotta hate MIT. <laughs> so it's likely that this nuclear reaction, it was this nuclear reactor, it was something that maybe they downloaded a video or something just to, you know, just to put it on the resume, just to apply to MIT. And what happens is the admission guy said, hey, you know, it doesn't look like that's part of your story, not part of your passion, and, and maybe that's why he got rejected, right? So, so these admission guys, they're onto something. This, you know, you guys have heard this a lot if you've gone through this college application thing, right? It's all about this passion thing. The secret to success, whether we are talking about as a student uh, at one of these top schools or just in life in general, um, the secret is not this list of things that you do uh, to impress somebody, right? The secret is actually who you are underneath. Your true passion that you continuously work on, that you wanna you know, improve and get better at for yourself uh, and not for anybody else. That's the secret, that's passion. So what's your passion and how do you figure it out? All right, so I think there's three factors, three factors that, uh, three sort of tests that you can do to see if something is your passion. First is what I call the suck. All right, so people often, when you, when you think passion, you think, oh, this is something that I love to do all the time, always brings me joy. So I think that's partially true, but I think it also uh, has to make you feel uncomfortable at times. It has to be hard at times, and sometimes it might downright suck. Right, so for example, a lot of you guys, maybe you play Valorant uh, online with your friends, maybe you play uh, Rocket League or whatever it is, and you really enjoy it, you play it all the time. Does that make it a passion, uh, or is it just an interest? So I think there's a difference. The difference between interest and passion is that with a passion, you always want to improve it, get better at it, learn more about it, right? It's not a static activity. When you start pushing your boundaries, of course, what are you doing? You're getting yourself out of your comfort zone, and that's, that's the part that makes you uncomfortable, and that's what I'm calling the suck. Right, so if it's never hard for you, you're probably not trying very hard to get better at it. So first test for a passion, it has to suck. So what you're probably thinking is, you know, oh, okay, I do my English homework all the time, it sucks, 
Never want to do it. So is that my passion? Not yet, right? So the second, the second test about um, uh, being a passion is it has to be just because. So the suck cannot be because it is a homework assignment. Um, it can't be because your parents made you do it. It can't be because your coach made you do it. And it certainly can't be because you want to try to get an MIT that way. It has to be just because, just for fun. So say you're coding something, all right? It's not an assignment. It's not a hackathon. It's just for fun. Um, so try this. Try opening up Scratch. And I know you guys are kind of rolling your eyes at me about Scratch, but I know it's built by MIT. <laughs> um, but I love Scratch. Scratch is actually a great way still to code, okay? See if you can code Candy Crush in Scratch. It's not easy. But if you're coding it just for fun, if you're coding it just because I suggested it to you, um, and it might frustrate the heck out of you because it's actually not an easy uh, game to make in Scratch, right? Then that checks off two of the factors of being a passion in my book. So let's do another example. Say you're doing a TikTok. Say you're doing a TikTok and you thought it'd be funny to, to, to let's say, eat a cricket or something, right? That probably sucks, probably. Um, and maybe you did it for the heck of it. Is that passion? So not yet, because I think the third test is it has to be consistent over time. Right? So a passion is something you have to go back to over and over. So if your passion is being an influencer, then yeah, maybe that first cricket is awesome, but then you got to do a second cricket. Then you got to eat three. Then you got to eat four and go and so on. Right? So then maybe being an influencer might be your passion. You look at Le LeBron James. The guy is 38 years old. Still one of the best in the league, pulling his Lakers into the playoffs. One game one just the other night. Dude is almost 40 years old, still playing hard for a fifth championship. Why? Cash, passion, right? Passion. It's hard, but you still do it just because over and over. All right. Anyway, I feel like I used the word passion a million times by now. You guys are probably sick of that word, but I hope it gave you a new perspective. I hope you find your passion, and I hope a bunch of you get into MIT. <laughs> Thanks, everyone.